Well, good morning. This is Pastor Keith Hodges. I want to welcome you today to Everyday Sunday. Psalms 118 verse 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope today uh, that you're finding something to rejoice in, that you're setting your heart and your mind on Jesus Christ and the good things that God has in store for you. Well, today I want to share with you a message simply entitled, The Ultimate Yes. And it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. The Apostle Paul gives us what I believe to be one of the most uh, insightful revelations to how we are to be positioned in prayer to not just survive, but to thrive and really uh, begin to touch the heart of God and experience the power of prayer in our lives. So let's talk today about this ultimate yes. So he says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 19, For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you. And look what he says. And as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. Come on, somebody. Let's get a shout to the Lord on that one. Because he is God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. So Paul says that Jesus Christ is not wavering. When you come to God in prayer, God is not wavering between yes and no. As a matter of fact, God through his son Jesus Christ has made his son Jesus the ultimate yes and he always does, the Bible says, what he says he will do. So look at verse 20. For all the promises of God, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. He's not wavering between yes and no. All the promises of God have been fulfilled in Christ. And so now God's answer to every promise is yes and amen. Look what he says. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. So let's talk about this. So Jesus is the ultimate yes, and all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. God has fulfilled them and no longer is wavering. There's no longer a struggle. Let me just say this to you. The struggle that you and I experience in prayer is not the struggle on God's part. God has settled the struggle. There's no longer a determination as to whether God will answer your prayer. All the promises of God have been fulfilled in Christ and they are all yes and amen because Jesus is God's ultimate Yes. So let's talk about that struggle. So the difference between struggling in prayer and thriving in prayer really comes down to how you position yourself. And so let's talk about what does that really mean. So if you are positioning yourself in a place where you're praying to God for an answer, right? You're praying for an answer from God and you're asking God to do something, asking and looking for an answer from Him. Well, let me just say this. If you're praying for an answer, the struggle's real. The truth is, we have way too many Christians, way too many Christians that are begging, that are pleading, and that are crying out to God. And all the while, hear me, all the while they are wondering, does God even hear my prayers and does God even care? They're begging, they're pleading, and they're crying. They're begging, they're pleading, and they're crying. And all the while they're wondering, does God even hear and does God even care? And the truth is, the reason that many Christians struggle in prayer and many Christians have pushed back from a thriving life of prayer and intimacy with God is because they have begged and they have pleaded and they have cried and they've seen nothing happen and they have resolved in their minds that God must not hear or else God must not care. And so I want to just bring some clarity to you today because if you're praying from that position where you're praying for an answer, then you're going to struggle. But let's flip the coin. What would happen if instead of praying for an answer, what would happen if you begin to pray from the promise? What if you begin to pray from the promises of God? Because if you're praying from the promises of God, the Bible says, look what it says, it says that the answer is already yes and amen. All the promises of God have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding, shout it out loud, yes, 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 the ultimate yes has been declared through God, through God because of his son, Jesus Christ. So listen to what the Bible says. Paul is speaking here on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he says this, he says, when we pray from the promise. We're not praying for an answer. We're praying from the promise. Then we already have an answer, right? If I'm praying from the promise, I already have the answer. Guess what the answer is? The answer is yes. And the answer is amen. Let me give you one last thought here. So what if I told you, what if I told you that the heartbeat of prayer is not really asking, but agreeing? What if I told you the heartbeat of prayer is not really asking God, but really agreeing with God with what he has already promised and what he has already declared through his son, Jesus Christ. Because when we say yes, listen to what Paul said. He said, and our amen, which means yes, 
to God's yes gives glory to God. So Paul says something. He says, when you say yes to God's yes, then it brings glory to God and it brings the answer into your life. When you say yes to God's yes, it brings glory to God and your prayers are answered. And here's why your prayers are answered. Your prayers are answered because you're not praying for an answer. You're praying from a promise. And if you're praying from a promise, then the answer has already been given. The answer is yes and amen. So I want to encourage you today. Stop praying for an answer. Stop asking God and start agreeing with God based on the promises of the Lord. And when you begin to pray the promises, all of a sudden the answer is already given. So you're not waiting for an answer. You're praying the answer because you have a promise from God. And I want to tell you what happens. When you begin to pray from the promise, there's a confidence, there's a boldness, and there is a visitation from God. You can sense the presence of God. Why? Because when we say yes to His yes, it gives glory to God. And when we bring glory to God, guess what happens? All of a sudden, you sense His presence, you feel His power, and you know that even though you may not see the answer, you already have the answer because it's yes and amen. Jesus Christ, the ultimate yes to God's promises. God bless you today in Jesus' name.